my friend Eden, for example, we have um, another series about like the reality competition show. Yeah. And she, her whole bit is that she lives 20 minutes away. And uh, we work that into every, that's her like sob story is that she lives 20 minutes away. That's money. That her, yes, exactly. But now she hates it because people actually go up to her and then they're like, did it take you 20 minutes to get here? Oh, and Jesus. She's, yeah, she's like, she hates making those now. But I'm like, can we make one? <laughs> like, I feel bad. <laughs> well, it's also kind of funny when your friends suffer. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Oh, yes. Hey, guys. It's Brittany Broski, and I'm so excited to be hosting the official TikTok For You podcast. We're going to be hearing all about our guests' creative backgrounds, where they come from, their bathroom habits, and it's all here on the TikTok official For You podcast. Don't forget to subscribe so you're notified every time we drop a new episode. You know, when I think of people that have absolutely pushed the boundaries of what an app like TikTok can do, there's one person that comes to mind, and it's Bowmanizer. I'm sure you've seen his spoofs of reality shows and his tongue-in-cheek humor, but also they're very technically impressive and very well edited. He's just a fantastic content creator in every sense of the word, and I had the absolute pleasure of sitting down with him to discuss his rise to TikTok fame, and I had, I had to ask him about his dentist information because his teeth are so white and perfect. Anyways, here's the interview. Hey! Hello! Girl. <laughs> Girl, it's been a long time coming. Have we oh, ever talked? In we have life? never spoken, no. Well, I've this been a fan like, of yours for a long a time. time. You are, Brittany, you are the soul of the nation. <laughs> Did you know that? You, America's <laughs> sweet hole or something. You, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Precisely what I was going to say, yeah. The sweet hole of America. <laughs> Well, I wanted, I've been waiting to say this line, so let me say it. Okay. Welcome to my extra special guest judge, Bowmanizer. <laughs> <laughs> that Goodbye. That was a really great reference for everyone who doesn't understand. My extra special guest judge. So I want to hear your story, where you're from, who you are, how old you are. Just walk us through the Bowmanizer story. Okay, so um, I, this is the Bowmanizer story. I am, first of all, from Canada. Um, up way up north where it's actually freezing and very dark all the time. Mm, um, my TikTok journey started uh, a, last December, so 2019. Mm -hmm. um, I, well, first of all, TikTok wasn't cool for like the longest time. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. It, it was not cool. And then, because I remember I was like dating people who were like using TikTok and I was like, texting all my friends like they use tiktok and that was like <laughs> the, I look and i'm i'm in my early 20s now and w when that was all happening i was like they were 14 and i yeah. was not <laughs> yeah but like but you changed the game making it cool then you had like rosa popping up yeah. you had like a bunch of people that were like actually making it funny yeah um and then that is around the time that i was like okay Maybe I could do something here. I also was going to school for radio and television arts. Oh, wow. Um, I originally wanted to be an actor, but I was like, I can't be poor. <laughs> so I need <laughs> eat. Yeah, I have to eat. I have to wear my clothes and and, and have a house. So, so I was like. So that you, you started it as sort of an acting portfolio, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. I, I was like, I was in school to be, to do this like behind the scenes work and, and create stories and stuff but i was like i'm not doing anything I have, i'm gonna graduate with like nothing to show for myself mm. plus i want to be an actor like i want to entertain people i want to be in front of the camera i want to tell stories um and like precisely at that time tiktok was cool and then i had some friends that were like you should do this like i see all these people that are yeah. just like you on this app like you should go for it and, and try it out uh and that's when it started wow so it was like late 2019 late December, 2019. Yeah. Wow. And at the perfect moment, because then TikTok just took off. It did. That was, it was yeah. so different too, because that was sort of the absolute height of Addison and Charlie. And when, mm -hmm. you know, they, it, it almost shifted from, you know, TikTok was our little secret to this global phenomenon that it is mm -hmm. now. And so mm -hmm. to be part of that transition, it's just, oh yeah, what an honor. Well, and you know what, you know what else? It's like, I was, I was part, I, I, 
personally, I'm very thankful and grateful that I came to the TikTok scene at like the perfect time right. because that was when uh, creativity was so important on TikTok. Yep. And and people were like putting in effort. And the whole thing was like, I can't believe somebody would put in all this effort. Yeah. And here comes my content. <laughs> Which, that are, it, that's a great segue because I want to <laughs> ask you about that. So, well, I have yeah. so many questions. The okay. first, for the people that don't know Bowman's content, it is extremely well produced. <laughs> I mean, it's like shocking. It's like this is, I'm on TikTok. He, he does spoofs of reality shows. Um, with the perfect music in the background and the sound effects and the, the bleeps and everything. It's just fantastic. <laughs> so I want to know what was your breakthrough <clears throat> video that really kind of boosted you? Um, there's like two parts to this. There was the, there's, there's, uh, so, okay. I started this reality TV series where I would take like very silly, minute problems and make them larger than life. Yeah. Um, the first one was just like my professor sent me uh, at the read the syllabus email and I was stabbed in the back. Nobody <laughs> saw that one, but my friends saw it and they were like, okay, that's pretty good. So okay. I kept going with it. One day I, uh, this actually happened. I woke up in the morning, opened the door to my room and on the floor in my apartment, I had a roommate, um, on the floor was a pile of dirt and a broom next to it because my roommate had swept and he didn't clean up the dirt. Oh, classic roomie. And I thought to myself, me? <laughs> Am I supposed to clean that up? Are we then, cavemen? Are we gorillas? What is this? <laughs> then, then I was like, do I do it? Do I make a TikTok? And then I was like, I'm gonna regret this if I don't. <laughs> so I made this. <laughs> so I made a TikTok where I like I'm I'm stabbed in the back. Oh no, I was shot in the gut from the disrespect. <laughs> I get on I get on the floor and I uh much like the dirt on the ground, I am worthless. I decide to pass away. So it's just yeah. me lying on the ground dead. And then, so part two to that is I kept making more and more of those. Uh -huh. And then the pandemic hit and so I made a video. Out. Yeah, literally. I made a video where my friend coughs and it's the cough that was heard around the world. It's, I have a vision and it was good. That was a pretty good video, but that's when like my life changed. And was that like overnight or was it like you kind of forgot about TikTok, came back and checked and was like, whoa. No, it was, see, the thing is I, um, I moved home because it was a pandemic and I had nothing else to do. So I was like committed to making great content. So I was making like a video after video every single week. Thank and you for your service. Cause yeah, we you know what? <laughs> just like there's so, I, I'm one to talk because effort is just, but you yeah. know what? This is an interesting conversation because yeah. that used to be so respected of yeah. like, oh my God, they put so much time into this. And now mm -hmm. it's like people would much rather see you just open your camera laying in bed and do, oh, and then it gets, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and I don't like, it's such a yeah. weird. Transition. It's definitely changed. It's yeah. definitely changed for sure. Well, I want to pull up um, one of your, one of my favorites of yours, one of your videos. And I want you to walk us through kind of okay. the process, how long it takes to create. Um, okay. and this, Are we, so let's do let's, we, do we watch it first? Yeah. Okay, cool. So I'm sitting here catching up with my best friend, Eden. Did that really happen? No, I swear to you. Did you just swear at me? <laughs> Suddenly she starts beatboxing swear words at me. You are a <laughs> You just <laughs> right now. This is a disrespectful type. Unfortunately, you can't be so you should consider jail. <laughs> How am I fake? The only thing that's fake about me is this. <laughs> <laughs> Just hold on production, I'm getting her now. <laughs> I can't. Oh, you see what happened to me? I know that, but he's your best friend. Come on. I literally don't care. Can someone just pick my head up off the ground? Because I, I, I do not do anything. I can't. Oh my god. I could teach her a thing or two about dealing with conflict. So I'm sitting here catching up with my <laughs> Just that really happened. Fantastic. Thank you, thank you. That's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't gonna say it, but that is one of the most ridiculous things. <laughs> oh my god! That's All right, so walk us through what okay. is that? where did that come from? <laughs> so there's there's this scene from the Real Housewives of New York mm -hmm. where one of the housewives, Aviva, 
she um they're at like a dinner party and somebody calls her fake and then she literally says the only thing that's fake about me is this and she rips off her prosthetic leg and smashes it on the table and so i i actually was in uh i had like a general meeting with some person and we were talking about that scene and i said oh my god i should like do one where i like throw up my head and then i went oh my god <laughs> So then I like crafted this idea where somebody calls me fake, but then I needed a reason why I was upset in the first place and why I'm fake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the reason was that she was beatboxing swear words at me. A complete because, understanding. Yes, complete. And that's the thing that I love about these, these videos in particular is that there's never an issue. No. There's <laughs> absolutely never an we'll issue. Fine. Yeah. I'm, I'm making one right now where I'm mad at my step, my stepsister because she's been, uh, she's had a, a lot to say about me recently. And then she goes, I, I wished you happy birthday. And then <laughs> it like cuts to like <laughs> her like story post for my birthday. And it's just like, happy birthday to this silly guy. <laughs> And I'm just like pissed. <laughs> You're like, when will it end? When will it end? My name stays in your mouth. <laughs> yes. That's, so that's right. how that worked. Well, who are your co-stars here? So, yes. Yeah, so that's that was Eden. Okay. Uh, Eden is my best friend. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also have my stepsister, Alyssa. Everybody gets that confused because I look more like Eden and Alyssa is definitely white. <laughs> so <laughs> that's that. And then... Also, my mother is in some of the TikToks as well. Yeah. And you pay them all SAG rates, right? I, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, um, okay. So earlier you were talking about uh, quarantine. You know, you've kind of been, mm -hmm. we've all been stuck. Mm -hmm. Has that boosted your creativity or kind of, you know, has it gone down? Is the pressure on? Because, you know, people are watching. What's going mm -hmm. on? You know, I would say it's a mixture of both. I, um, when all of this started and pandemic hit the pandemic hit and suddenly i was getting millions of views mm -hmm. and all of my dms were like make more now <laughs> and i was like okay i these take a long time to make yeah um so every week i was focused on making like one good reality tv tiktok how long is that take? a week <laughs> it, from, it, i mean from film how much footage do you have is it like two hours i uh, we we shoot for about two hours because it's it's a, a lot of just like getting it right and also yeah. I don't script anything I yeah. it's all up here and it is a lot of improv because yeah. otherwise you lose that like reality TV feel of it absolutely um and then like there's the confessionals there's the actual editing which is like seven hours sometimes yeah. then I have like green screen things where I'm like jumping out of helicopters or like a dinosaur eats me so like I have to do that. Literally, it's it's like, exhausting it's in your house. Like I'm a <laughs> yes, but to that point, um, it has boosted my creativity in the sense that like I am exactly where I need to be to be making this stuff. Yeah. Like I have so much room here. I have my my best friends and my mom to like help me and be in my videos. So lucky. Um, yeah. So like it's it's kind of been the perfect storm, but it's been absolutely exhausting. Oh sure. Well, Absolutely. yeah, I mean, just making any other, you know, long form content, there's so mm -hmm. much people don't like understand that of, you know, mm -hmm. what you're seeing is a nine, 10 minute video on your case, 59 seconds, yes. <laughs> it so much time. And when other people are involved, oh my God, I mm -hmm. never feel like we have to, hey guys, we have to go film. And they're like, Ugh. yeah, they enjoy it. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Well, they enjoy it, but it's also like, I, f I feel bad <laughs> asking to like, do you guys want to, do you guys want to make a video? <laughs> Especially like my friend Eden, for example, we have um, another series about like the reality competition show. Yeah. And she, her whole bit is that she lives 20 minutes away. And uh, we work that into every, that's her like sob story is that she lives 20 minutes away. That's money. That Yes, exactly. But now she hates it because people actually go up to her and then they're like, did it take you 20 minutes to get here? Oh, and Jesus. She's, yeah, she's like, she hates making those now. But I'm like, can we make one? <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel bad. <laughs> well, it's also kind of funny when your friends suffer. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Oh, yes. Like, that is hilarious. And I <laughs> yes. it. it makes it even more funny. 100%. <laughs> what about the, you know, the audience reception? Do you have some loyal followers? Oh yes. Oh uh, yes. I have I have I have some followers that like they know everything. They they are stands. They I we talk on a daily basis at this oh, point. Oh, I love it. 
I have one. I have one follower. His name is Josh. Uh, he is a king. He uh, on New Year's he sent me a paragraph wishing me Happy New Year, and then he sent me his favorite moments of 2020. So it was just like yeah, moments. moments. Yeah, like he sent me like moments from my TikToks. That was so cute. Oh my god! So Shout cute, out Josh. Josh, I know. Love you. I know. There's. I He's have king. followers like that where it's just like they remember things that I don't even. I'm like, have I said that? On the <laughs> Jesus Christ. It is shocking because, and I'm sure you feel this way. Sometimes when I say things, I say it and I forget and I move on. Absolutely. Even especially with my um my spam account on TikTok. Oh, that I is love spam. You stop that. My, that is garbage. <laughs> For everyone listening, his spam is Beaumontiaga. If you want to go <laughs> That is garbage. I refuse to believe that that account, that account exists, that anything I post <laughs> exists, and that anybody that follows that account exists. That it, Exactly. What is that? Exactly. But everybody exactly. knows. I don't know what you're it. talking about. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Period. <laughs> but no, people will remember the randomest things. Yeah. Well, it's and you know shocking. what it is? They love that, that aspect of um, accessibility of being mm. close and being in on that little secret. Mm. I have a spam mm. account that's private. So nobody oh. trying to request it. I'll deny you. Mm. Um, but it has 1.8 million followers. <laughs> so it's not really that private. Um, people really love that idea of yeah. like, this is my favorite creator and I get something so yeah. special and secret from them. And it makes, mm -hmm. it makes them feel more connected. I have a mm. couple fans like that too, of just, you know, ride or die. Yeah. And it is such a unique experience it's it's a very unique experience because like you get to know random people that that love you and you know nothing yeah. about them but like you love them back and then like like i'll do um you know how, like people do those like tiktok live streams but they'll go on omegle and like meet yeah. people it's like a meet and greet i'll do that and i'll get like returning people and i'm like first of all how did you know i was doing this <laughs> how did you, you know like, what? <laughs> you <Yeah>. got <laughs> oh. Very interesting. It's, it's, the whole thing has been an ex a very like once in a lifetime experience. For sure. How has sure. your life changed? I mean, obviously we're in like coronavirus, but like from mm -hmm. the day to day, mm -hmm. you have been absolutely just TikTok loves you. And Thank it's you. for a good reason. Um, yeah. LGBTQ, <laughs> Trailblazer, all of these yeah. incredible like honors. How has that been? Um, Terrifying. Uh, yeah. Really, really scary. You know, it's weird because that actually, when that was happening, as much as I loved it and I was like, wow, if, if, you know, 15 year old me could only see me now, right. like I, I was like heartfelt, but then it was also, I was terrified because I was like, the pressure. why am I, why do I need a label? Why, what I've never like needed to put myself in a box. Yeah. And then when people start asking me like, so what is your sexuality? <laughs> And, and why like, is it public? It's public discourse what? now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I felt like I immediately, as much as like I, if you had asked me two years ago, like, oh my God, I knew exactly what I was, every box I fit into. But now I'm like, am I? Yeah. <laughs> what? What? That's such a personal thing that like, I. it's weird to be sharing it with people. But then at the same time, it's like good that I am. And then also to, to yep. on the other side of it, it's like, I kind of just want to be Bowman. And like, exactly. why, why do all the straight people, they can just be themselves. Why do, does anybody who is either colored or queer have to be put in like multiple different categories? Yeah. You got to put a hashtag in your bio and just, yeah. it's a very double-edged sword because, mm -hmm. you know, it's that representation and, and diversity that we so desperately need. Mm -hmm. But it's also like, why do I have to be the post <laughs> for yeah. I definitely understand that sentiment of And then and sometimes I like I get it because obviously I'm queer, obviously I am not white. <laughs> so like I will do I that's me. Mm -hmm. But at the same time like my content specifically, I remember uh this one article said that my content is like if he says something like it's inherently queer and I was like, "Sure." Thank you. <laughs> but how? Yeah. <laughs> like, yes, but like what does that even mean? And I don't make any like queer focused contents like sure, but what? Yeah. <laughs> so it's, well, it's I, just, it's been an interesting ride, you know? For sure. And it's also, I, I definitely, 
Yeah. Wow. Of, of being in the spotlight and having all that press mm -hmm. and being like, oh my God, people are writing articles about me. But also it's like, yeah. it's like, I don't necessarily agree with what they're saying. <laughs> yeah. But I let them talk. They want to talk about me. Girl, write your article. Absolutely. Uh, period. <laughs> well, that's, that's, I mean, and on top of that, mm -hmm. well, you had a TikTok, uh, what's uh Times Square you were in Times Square well I, okay <laughs> <laughs> the or Canadian version of Times Square yes yeah. oh I forgot you're like yeah. not American yeah boring. Uh, D Dundas Square is what it's called um still, but though. yeah wow. still it, that was everything that Did you and then art everywhere that's like I would have absolutely just like lost control of my holes I <laughs> <laughs> That's so exciting. I'm so proud. I brought multiple pairs of underwear. <laughs> I <laughs> um no, it was actually when they when I got the call of like, so um TikTok wants to put you on a billboard. I yeah. immediately I immediately thought of all those uh whores <laughs> yeah. that I went to school with that doubted me, that didn't want to be my friend, that thought I was too different, too like not not cool enough, not straight enough, not white enough. I wasn't in a band, so I wasn't cool. Exactly. <laughs> so like, here I am on a billboard, okay? And oh, what are you doing? Period. I'm so proud. Yeah. And and also just like, to be when I went there, and I, so yeah, it was one thing to like get the call, but then when you're standing there, and I saw myself, and I'm with my sister and my best friend, who were like also have been making videos with me since I was 17 yeah. slash since my sister and I were 12, mm -hmm. like. It was such a full circle moment, and I like I will remember it for the rest of my life. It oh, was I love that. Um, it was crazy. It's so cool. I, Eden's yeah. like, why am I not up there? <laughs> <laughs> she was. <laughs> she was mad. <laughs> well, um, a lot of you know the content that you put out, even though it's extremely highly produced and mm -hmm. edited, it's still very relatable. Because yeah. the subject matter is something that all of us bond over, you know, reality TV or, or yeah. you know, scuffles between friends or whatever. Mm -hmm. Do you resent the title of quirky? I've seen you make a lot of videos of like, you bitches on here are like, and then you think you just won. You just won it all. <laughs> so like, I, know. <laughs> I um okay. I, yes. <laughs> Look, I mean, Quirky is good on some people. I don't claim it. Um, but at the same time, like I I don't know. I I sometimes I regret not doing that. Because yeah. some of these girls can, I mean, <laughs> not to point fingers at you, <laughs> but some of these girls can just turn on their camera and then they're just like, hey. And then it's yeah. funny. And it's genuinely funny. Mm -hmm. And I could do that, but I never did. And whenever I do do that, it's crickets. <laughs> it's <a> silence. <laughs> They're like, where's the reality TV Bowman? Where's the girls' room podcast? Like, like, okay. the studio. Back I know. <laughs> no, that's, but, that's definitely, yeah. But at the same time, like, I, I'm happy to make these, like, larger than life moments because it has turned into an art form. And it really is something that I put a lot of energy into. Absolutely. So, like, now, especially this last year, like, they are very much so represent representative of like moments in my life. Yeah. Of like things we have, like I got left on red. So I made a TikTok where I get left on red and then I got ghosted once. So I made a TikTok where I, I had to do a Ouija board and talk to a ghost. It was, <laughs> it's, it's been fun. It's, it's one of those. And like, genuinely, I mean this, not just cause you're, you know, on this podcast, mm -hmm. I've been a fan of yours because I, you know, the people that are pushing the boundaries of the app, because like you said, mm -hmm. it's one thing where just enjoyable people can have, mm -hmm. you know, a platform. Yeah. And I've done my fair share of, you know, skits and accents and impressions and mm -hmm. all that. But like at mm -hmm. the core of it, mm -hmm. people who are likable and who have charisma really mm -hmm. find a platform on, you know, these sort yeah. of apps. So yeah. for you pushing the boundaries of what short form video content is and just, you know, mm -hmm reinventing <laughs> what we thought TikTok yeah. was. You're really one of those people. So I, I hope you, you know that. Not to I, stroke your ego. Well, you get, I, it, loves, it loves a stroke. I'll tell you that. <laughs> but <laughs> no, and I am proud of, I'm proud of that. And I also, I know that because like, I, I really feel like I pioneered this, especially the reality TV thing, girl. I started doing that. And I, I know some people who they started yeah, making their reality TV TikToks, and I could have started some beef. I never did, 
but um i i i feel like i pioneered the, the or helped pioneer the like that uh, trend the overdoing it the try hard culture on tiktok yeah and then my mom even said to me the other day like the thing about you is that like you've never done what's like what other people are doing and i like i truly think that other people do them really well sure. and that's always been my thing like whenever somebody like oh, this one individual took one of my videos word for word at one point did it go viral and it went viral and i was like and he had more followers than me and i was like okay come on he was actually very nice about it but um my mom was like you you've stayed being yourself and mm -hmm. as much as like other people like try to be you like they do themselves really well and you just have to let them mm -hmm. and i thought that was really good advice but yeah to your point like i i'm enjoying just like staying in my lane and not caring about like virality and like going viral and just like building that's a career i think yeah. that's the key is like yeah. you know the talent is there and and mm -hmm. people will find you um yeah. i was talking about this um with someone else of like this trend of you know like for part two follow for oh, give me to 300k and i'll yeah. post, you know and it's like yeah what is your <clears throat> end goal in doing that of are you looking to build a platform to, you know, talk about an issue or a, a yeah. policy you're really passionate about? No. Like, no. usually no. So yeah. what's the goal? You know, you want to build up this big following just to say that you have it, but what are you going to do with it? And that's the other thing, too, is that I, I've, I've hated that. And the second that I, like, I'll follow somebody, maybe you feel the same way, I'll follow someone on TikTok, and then I start to see how they're, like, manipulating their followers into getting more followers and, like, so the way that they yeah what's your what do you want <laughs> and then, and it's, 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 yeah, yeah like i don't know i i see that happen and i'm like i thought you were cool and then i'm like now i'm like i don't okay like yeah. i'm very much so in this to just like make people laugh and also right. to give myself a career yeah. <laughs> so like that's what i'm doing it for and like i'm not like after your I, i'm not after your follow i'm just like here for a good time you know yeah. that's, but that's at, at the core of it is like if you yeah. don't enjoy creating that'll mm -hmm. be through and people will see you for who you are mm -hmm. oh. and i feel like also tiktok now is different than how it was like before it was just like sure. it was a lot of young people just having fun yeah now somebody told me that like the average age on tiktok like it's millennials now it's not like young people anymore it's mostly like older people that are on TikTok, and I thought that was so interesting because now content is it's a lot about learning and it's yeah. a lot about um it's a lot about and which is so good but it's just it goes to show how much it's changed and like what the content is that people want now yeah and yeah. how it's being utilized in in our yeah. daily lives I mean it used yeah. to be I used to and I still do I use TikTok as an escape you know like it makes mm -hmm. me it makes me chortle mm -hmm. but sometimes you know I walk away from TikTok having learned something new, like you said, or being deeply disturbed by an issue that I was brought that was brought to my attention. And <laughs> yes, I'm such a tool in like affecting yeah. change in the world. I feel like um, it's really brought back the power to the people. TikTok has brought that power to just like the individual. Yeah, and especially it's a space where like a lot of people's uh, social. Uh, communities don't follow them on TikTok. So they can like post whatever they want and be whoever they want without like all of their friends from their high school and their family following them. True. So it's a, it's a very different environment and it's caused a lot of it's changed the world. Oh, period. without a doubt. And yeah. there's a there is a certain level of anonymity because you know mm -hmm. a lot of people like um who's a good example? Billy Eilish had her mm -hmm. account and like overnight got like <laughs> yeah. something, but yeah. the username was like user two oh four oh one oh. And it was her <laughs> messing around and like yeah. what other where else could that happen? It's yeah. so cool to see that yeah. side of both celebrities and just you know to watch normal people like you and me just mm -hmm. absolutely blow up for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. I also wanted to ask you about um, kind of the pressure of being in the, well, not, not necessarily in the spotlight, but having a platform. Do you mm -hmm. feel the pressure to mobilize it for issues that, you know, you're, you're passionate about or that the internet is passionate about? Um, and do you think that that's our responsibility? Okay. Um, 
Good, great question. And this was something that I was like struggling with, especially back in June yeah. when the protests were happening and it was like, we were in the thick of it. Mm -hmm. And I remember, okay, see the thing about me is that I am not somebody who yells and screams. I just am not, it's my nature. I'm half Jamaican. I, I would like to just like sit and watch <laughs> sometimes, but, um, I remember this huge pressure to use my platform at the time. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking to myself, if, if it was anybody else, I would be yelling at them too, being like, why aren't you using your platform? Sure. But I had just been given a million followers a month ago. There's no tutorial on what to say. And I remember you have to learn how to use your platform. It is not something that you just like start using and you're just like, oh, I know how to do this. And I can just carry on as if I had a thousand followers. Mm -hmm. It's not like that. No. And especially like you have to learn that there's different content for all the different apps. Yes. It was like, it was like, no matter what I said, no, it doesn't, it, I could say something that was the most unproblematic thing, but I'm not a problematic individual. Okay. I'm not, I'm, blood. Yeah. They, they, I'm either too, I'm not, I'm not black enough. I'm, I'm uh, too white to be black, too rich to be black, too black to be for my parents to have any Can't sort win. of money. Can't win. It, I remember when I was like going viral too, like they could not figure out why I had a nice house. <laughs> and I was like, that's a little racist, but whatever. But I, I actually messaged them and I was like, hi, <laughs> just out of curiosity, like why? And he was like, you're not using your platform. I was like, why is it my job to educate white people on how to not be racist? No, that, and it's also like, not only as a black man to, you know, use your platform, mm -hmm. but also just like as someone with a check mark, what qualifies me to be a social, political, e environmental exactly. activist? Do exactly. I look like Greta Thunberg? Absolutely. You kind of do, but. <laughs> get to that. But you know what I mean? Of like, it's like a, you're bestowed this responsibility yeah. and I want yeah. to do the best by my followers yeah. and by the internet of not letting them down. But it's also like I recognize by trial and error that mm -hmm. I am one to talk about. Yeah, no. And, and I remember just feeling like, I just want to listen. I look, I am, I obviously, I feel this like my, my brother, especially like he, he's gotten followed home by the police because of his, the, he wasn't supposed to be black living in our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. He's got pulled over by like the SWAT team. Like I've, I've seen it. Oh. <laughs> I've seen it. But at the same time, I grew up in a, uh, an all white neighborhood. My family is white. My I went to a all white. It wasn't all white, but a pretty white arts high school. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the stuff that I'm learning about, by the way, that wasn't even in my country. <laughs> like I'm I'm learning about it. Oh like, my god, that's a whole other thing. You're not even exactly. American. <laughs> I'm not even American. What do you have to say about this? You're like I don't know. <laughs> and that's the other thing too. That's it drives me nuts because at the, like I get it. It's it's a world issue. It is not it is not specific to America. But what whoever is in my DMs, what can you tell me about what's going on in Canada right now? Absolutely nothing. Yep. So like, it's please such just stop. Standard. Yeah, it's such a double standard. And it's also like the internet loves to do this too. They learn buzzwords. They learn psychology yep. terms. They love mm -hmm. to throw it around and mm -hmm. you know guilt and shame people into talking about issues when it's like. You don't know what I'm dealing with personally and what I'm mm. like you just said of like my personal experience with this, that, and the other, just because yeah. I'm not talking about it doesn't mean that I don't care. Exactly. And, and I also care. I also felt like I was girl, I was trying to protect my mental health. Um, exactly. No, it's very true of um, you know, I I, I kind of want to since this is creator focused, you know, this mm -hmm. whole podcast, I really want to shine a light on, you know, so many people want to so many people want to have that platform, but it's like, once you have it, you can never do anything right. Mm -hmm. So you have to, you know, be true to who you are. Mm -hmm. Remember why you created in the first place is because you mm -hmm. enjoy it. Cause the minute mm -hmm. you lose that, your followers will see the internet mm -hmm. will see. And that's, it's the beginning of the end. So, mm -hmm. you know, maintaining that platform is really something that a lot of creators struggle with. It's like, do mm -hmm. I, am i deserving of this oh do you ever have that spiral do i just <laughs> i have the spiral i have the spiral of it's all gonna go away tomorrow oh man. <laughs> yes i i really always have that spiral of, of like what if i lose this but then i have to remember like how <laughs> would that happen but i have a, but like do did you feel that when when you kind of blew up that you were like 
how do I use this? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, there, I didn't feel the pressure to um, mobilize anyone mm. until, you know, like um, early 2020 when the the first one I remember was the fires in Australia. Mm. People were like, why aren't you talking about this? And I was like, I'm not Australian. <laughs> also, I didn't know. Like, yeah. I, like a lot of the times when people are in my DMs yelling at me to talk about something, that's the first time I'm hearing about it, which is, oh, yeah. great. you know, like, don't stop doing that. I want to hear yeah. about what's going on in the world, but it's also yeah. like, what am I going to do as kombucha girl? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh my God, I don't understand who you're messaging. It's very interesting too those those DMs because on one hand it's like please <laughs> this important <laughs> cause needs you and then like the next DM is like can you wish my friend a happy birthday <laughs> and I'm like it is that is actually like that in and of itself that experience it it, it just like it's such a real thing because it's yeah. always there's always two sides of it yes and it's like especially with this job it's like people need you and people at the same time don't understand what you do or how it's a job absolutely you no know? so it's like it's it's a very interesting experience it's it's a it's a question of respect and it's a question of boundaries mm -hmm. and it's a question mm -hmm. of you know uh having thick skin mm -hmm. and I, I don't want this to come off as like we're not grateful because i am oh, so no. grateful oh, i we love this yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you know, there it doesn't come without um, death spirals for our mental health. <laughs> it's actually very, it's quite mentally exhausting, and I and I think that I only say I'm not saying that out of like ungratefulness. I I say that from the point of view of myself a year ago, thinking, oh, I just want a million followers; it'd be so easy. Right. And then like you get there, and then you kind of realize like it's more than just that. It's yeah. more, and especially like I don't personally. Obviously, yes, I'm an influencer to what most people think of as an influencer, but I'm also like a creator as you yeah. are too. And so like to constantly on top of that, have to like think up video ideas and, and concepts and storylines and how to make people laugh on top of all of the other things that you have to do to grow and, and have a business. And it's a lot of work it that is. like people don't really realize. Yeah. But it's good yeah. to talk about it though, because people yeah. don't, I mean, you know, unless we talk about it and there are mm -hmm. some... And I, I hate the word, but like influencers, I hate that word. I much prefer yeah. content creator, like you said. Mm -hmm. um, there are some influencers who c make the mistake of complaining mm. about all oh, my life and my mansion and my this, that, and the other. <laughs> like, you are tone deaf. You are yeah. tone deaf yeah. in the middle of a global pandemic. And yeah. it's one of those things where it's like you don't want to undervalue someone's struggle in life because mm -hmm. we all have our individual struggles. Yeah. But it's like, girl. Yeah. Well, moving moving on. <laughs> um, I wanted to. You talked earlier about some of the best advice you've ever mm -hmm. received. Um, mm. But that's it. Was kind of specific to being a creator. Do you have any just general life advice for us, Bowmanizer? Yeah, I definitely do. Um, I have the best advice anybody has ever given me is stress is a problem without a plan. Ooh, isn't that so good? Write that I, down. Write that down. Write that down. <laughs> If you have, if you're stressed, make a plan. And I've done that. And that really has like propelled me. From, here I am. Yeah. <laughs> um, wow. That's fantastic. Th I also like, I also am a big pro proponent of like manifesting and speaking things into existence. A year ago, uh, maybe a little over a year ago. So it was like summer 2019. Mm -hmm. um, I remember I wrote down like in my journal, um, everything that I wanted to happen. I, I had a dream and my dream, I was had a dream about my ex and I, I was, I went, uh, I, the next day I was like, so sad. I was like, I miss him. And then I went to look for videos of us. <laughs> oh, but then I found uh, the spiral, but then I found a video of me acting from high school. And then I was like, Oh yeah, I'm passionate about this. And oh. then I wrote in my journal, like, my dream literally led me to pursuing my dreams. And I, I wrote down like everything that I wanted to happen. And then a year later, it all happened. Oh my God. Yeah, it's crazy. And um, so that's big advice is just, I, I I think that there's something to be said for like saying things are going to happen and yeah. it changes your energy to like actually propelling yourself towards that. I feel like you start to make the right decisions to get yourself yeah. there. But be careful because the same works for the opposite. If all you mm -hmm. talk about is, oh, this is never going to happen. Yep. Oh, I'm mm -hmm. never going to do it. Then girl, you're mm -hmm. never going to do it. And that's all you're going to see. That's all you're going to attract. Yeah. I remember 
this summer, I was like, oh, my views are dwindling. Nobody watches my content anymore. I'm not funny. And then I, I got myself into that way of thinking. And then I was like, what am I doing? I have, I have views. People are watching me. People, they pay my bills. What am I doing? So oh, like, it you is, have to like speak it's all what you about, want. Yeah. The other advice that somebody, this is relationship advice. Oh, let's hear it. Yeah. Um, I said, how do I know if this guy likes me to, to one of my coworkers once? Uh -huh. And he said, talk about something that you're passionate about and see how they react. If they're on their phone. If they're, if they're on their phone. Yeah. If they laugh at you, if they say, cool, not it. Okay. So that's another advice that I was like, and not even for relationships, just people in general. I feel like when you talk about something that you really are excited about, not even something that you're doing, but just in general, a cause, an issue, yeah. how the, however they react is usually tells you a lot about them. You're just so like in a coffee thing. shop talking to strangers about Chromatica. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bowman, thank you so much for joining us. You know what? I'm so happy that we finally met. Oh, I know. It's so, I think, I try not to think about like how different things could have been, you know, if the pandemic yeah. didn't happen, but I'm so yeah. lucky and, and we're so fortunate that, you know, the internet can unite us all, but also divide us. Well, where can we find you? Um, give us all the handles. Um, you can find me at Bowmanizer everywhere. All right. Well, I think we're going to wrap it up. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.